Hey, what's up, what's up? I know my lighting's kind of jacked up, but welcome to Brandon Smooth, Brandon Smooth TV. Here to discuss the rise of Skywalker. Um, This movie had a lot of good in it. And it also has some bad parts. Um, So the movie starts off. We got Kylo Ren. Um, first, first of all, the opening crawl was kind of weird. It was like, what did it say? The first line was like, uh, the dead speak. I was like, okay. And it's talking about, I guess, some type of transmissions were coming from the outer realm from the Emperor Dark Sidious is back. So I guess Kylo Ren doesn't want to be challenged because he's the new supreme leader of the First Order. And uh, he's going to find Palpatine, find the Emperor to kill him. So that's how the movie basically starts off. He's, he's on some type of weird planet fighting people and shit. Then he got to find some type of uh, device called a Wayfinder in order to get, like, directions to a, um, to the Sith home planet where Palpatine apparently had just been chilling for the last 30-plus years, not really doing shit. He's sitting in the dark and shit. He fucking, um... <clears throat> he's just sitting in the dark chilling, and ain't got no lights on there. I know it's the dark side. I'm like, God damn, y'all don't have no... Yeah, that's beside the point. So the movie started off okay. I did enjoy um, watching Kylo Ren. Uh, if I had to say, Kylo Ren is the most interesting character um, in the whole new sequels, you know, um, because he goes up and down, and I get to him a little later. So, cut to there. Next, you got Ray. She's training with Leia, which is kind of a movie too late. Um, all the Leia stuff, I'm glad they put Carrie Fisher in the movie, and I'm glad they didn't make her look like fucking Tarkin did in fucking Rogue One. He looked like a CGI fucking mess. Looked like they was talking like a video game character. But Ray's training is a little too late. After you have The Force Awakens and then all the stuff she did in The Last Jedi, it's like, we're backtracking. And overall, I wish I could just erase The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi does not exist. Just do a, a Force mind trick on The Last Jedi that doesn't exist. And maybe they could have split this movie up into two movies. The first act and a half would have been the second movie. And then they could have worked and crafted something for the third uh, movie. So in my head, The Last Jedi don't exist. This is definitely more of a sequel to The Force Awakens. And they kind of just shit on the bad decisions made in The Last Jedi. I'm not mad at them trying to fix it because the shit was fucked up. So Ray, um, Ray did a pretty good job. Out of all three movies, this is the one where she seemed the most relatable. She also seemed more humble, they made her. Um, and she wanted to prove herself as a Jedi, even though we've seen her doing all this shit and whoop Kylo Ren's ass in the first and second movie. So I understand that. But the training to me was just a little um, too late. It was too late because she's fucking already beat Luke in hand-to-hand -hand combat in The Last Jedi. She whooped Kylo Ren's ass. She mind-tricked Stormtroopers in the first movie. She fucking um, lifted all those fucking boaters so the rebels couldn't escape on crate. Like, um, she did a lot of shit. And in this movie, she's still super, super OP powered up. But they did make her character, to me, more likable and more humble. So after we leave the planet, um, <clears throat> the planet, um, they know, they find out the Emperor's calling. And they all get back together. We have to get the crew together for uh, Finn, Ray, and Poe, which is cool. And basically, they like, look, we got to find Palpatine to end him. You know what I'm saying? And, um, oh, I forgot in the beginning, when Kylo Ren actually found Palpatine, Palpatine said, look, I give you all the power, all this fleet. You'll be the new emperor of everything, but you got to kill the girl. So Kylo Ren's searching for Ray to go kill her. And Ray's trying to find a way to Exegol, the new planet, to kill the emperor, which is cool. So fucking they get together and they find this thing called a sith fucking dagger on some type of fucking because first they're looking for a second wayfinder but in the process of finding it they end up finding the sith dagger now this is the first time in the movie i scratched my head and said how sway how in the fuck can you do this so they find the guy and Lando's actually on the plane. He just pops up out of nowhere. And he's like, hey, I was with Luke. We was looking for this wayfinder to find a Sith planet. Cool, cool, cool. Fucking. It, somehow, the Knights of Ren, since they're helping Kylo fucking track Rey, they end up fucking 
like finding her on this desert planet. And they capture fucking Chewie. And the ship with Chewie is, is taking off. And then Kylo Ren rolls up on her at the same time when she cut the thing off the X-Wing or whatever. Fucking she reaches in the fucking air and fucking holds the ship with the fucking force, bro. And I'm sitting in the theater. I went by myself. I'm like, how in the fuck is she doing that? When you just start training at the beginning of this movie, literally 10, 15 minutes ago in the movie, you just start training. And now you can hold a fucking ship from leaving the atmosphere and taking flight. Cool, cool, right? So then Kylo Ren shows up, and I guess he's on the other end. They have like a tug of war or something, and he's trying to make the ship leave, you know, with Chewie and the information or whatever they fucking need it. Long story short, she fucking shoots Sith lightning out of her fucking hand. She shoots Sith lightning, force lightning, excuse me, force lightning out of her fingertips. Blows the fucking ship up and fucking kills Chewie. How sway? That was the first time I was scratching my head like. Who taught you how to use Sith Lightning? Leia? Because that's who trained you. And we know Luke didn't teach you how to do that. Now, I read Star Wars. I love Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? I consider myself an uber fan. And fucking even some of the Sith Lords had to train on how to use Sith Lightning. Uh, Force Lightning. It's not a technique that's easily learned. But since it's Ray, boom, bam, bing, she knows how to do it. So they kill the ship. She thinks she fucking kills Chewie. She gets mad and fucking leaves and goes back to... And I'm probably missing some shit, oh well. She goes back to Octu where Luke was. Come to find out, Chewie's not even fucking dead. They had him on another transport ship the whole time. So Pen, uh, Pen, Finn and Poe try to go rescue Chewie. And then she leaves. And she goes back to Octu. Meanwhile, you know, the First Order's doing a whole bunch of shit. They're about to blow some shit up. We know it's the same movie. Long story short, fucking, when she goes back to the island, she's done. She crashes the TIE Fighter. She stole Kylo Ren's TIE Fighter when they had the second fucking fight on the Death Star. Goes back and fucking, um, this movie happened so fast, too. That's why I'm trying to process everything because it's crazy. But she fucking, uh, she goes back and then she throws the lightsaber like, you know, I'm through being a Jedi. I killed one of my friends. I failed. Luke catches it. The fan service with Luke, they tried to make up for The Last Jedi, and I'm glad he got some screen time, and I'm glad they fucking brought him back to do that, because they fucked the movie up so up, they did the best they could. So Luke does a real lesson. This is Luke Skywalker, not fucking Jake Skywalker from The Last Jedi. This is actually Luke. And he tells her, you know, look, we fail, we fall down and get back up, blase, blase. Those were the good parts in the movies. Yes, it had a lot of fan service, but I think the fan service parts worked. Most of them. So, long story short, they fucking go confront the Emperor. They brought Han Solo back to kind of help turn his son good, which I thought was cool since you fucking stuck a, a saber through his fucking chest in the first movie. And, uh, you know, they end up winning. Now, Kylo Ren and, uh, Kylo Ren and Rey love, have a love story because she stabbed him in the fucking chest early in the movie and then she just heals him out of nowhere. I don't know where she learned Force Heal either. The video games and the lore and the books I read in the EU stated that Jedi's can use the Force to fucking heal themselves. But they can't use the force. What's that said? They probably could to heal others, but I've never seen it. And this is like, she's fixing skin, bone, mucus, DNA, cells, all that shit. She's basically Wolverine's power, but she can do it to other motherfuckers. And I was like, well, shit, that kind of eliminates all the danger. Because fucking, you can just heal yourself or heal anybody when they fucking get injured. Why are we fighting? So, long story short, they end up going to confront the Emperor together because Leia's last act, and Leia, I did think they sent her off cool. It was a cool send-off. Uh, had the funeral and everything, and it was cool. But she used the last of her life essence to send. I think she reached into the Force Nether Rim or whatever, Force Heaven, and she pulled fucking Han Solo back to try to get Ben to turn good. That's when Harrison Ford came back. He talked to his son, and he turned back into Ben Solo. So I thought that was good. Now, get to the end, there's a million fucking Harry Potter looking cult leader look, cult looking motherfuckers that fucking, um, City has got. And they just all sitting here chilling, so he wants to have Ray strike him down, since we find out that's his granddaughter, dun dun dun, spoiler alert. Which kind of explains why she's so powerful, but it's one thing having power, 
It's the second thing knowing how to utilize the power. It's a lot of smart people in the world, y'all. It's, it's fucking bums that know a lot of information, but if they can't apply their knowledge, they can't use it. So you can be powerful and have something, but if you're not taught how to use it properly, it just really doesn't make sense. Um, overall, the movie was better than The Force Awakens. It was better than The Last Jedi. Um, what's some other key parts I like about the movie? The fan servicey stuff helped. C-3PO got an arc. I thought his comedy was the only comedy that worked in the movie. They made some little jokes and shit. That was cool. And fucking long story short, fucking... I like this movie more than I didn't like it, but it's not a perfect movie. I give it about a 60-40. Leaning on the light side, maybe 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. It was half good, half not. It was a lot of stuff I was just sitting there shaking my head. Like, how in the fuck are they still doing this? But this isn't one of those movies you pick apart. After The Last Jedi, I felt like a fiend, y'all. And it was a drought. The Last Jedi was a drought. And then I came in The Rise of Skywalker. And they gave me a hit of some good shit. You know what I'm saying? So, the saga's over. They wrapped it up the best they can with Ryan Johnson's fucking... That movie didn't even really make no sense. Um, they gave Chewie a medal at the end. And I literally said when they gave Chewie a medal after nine fucking movies that he finally get his medal. Thank you. Chewie had an arc. Chewie broke down when Leia died and... That was one time in the theater. My eyes, I ain't gonna even front, start getting a little watery and shit. I was like, damn. All your friends are dead. All your friends are dead. Push me to the edge. All your friends are dead. So, yeah. But other than that, Rod the Skullwork, I'm gonna have to make a second video because this is just me getting out the fucking theater and just rambling about random parts. Um, but I'll break the whole thing down. Um, if you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. And, um... Yeah, I was scratching my head, but it was good parts. Peace.